On Sunday, Heston Speedway presented the Mega Blitz Mach 3, and that featured twin 38-lap features for the UFO and three-state flyer super late models. Well, let's take a look at race number one. A random pill draw placed the eight ball of Mark Pettyjohn on the pole position for the event. But as they get underway, the five of Derek Byler jumps to the point. While Jim Yoder runs third, the 4D of Chad Hollenbeck and Andy Haas are side by side in a duel for the fourth spot. Using the lower groove, Hollenbeck is able to secure the position by the time they exit turn four. Up front, Byler goes high into one and two. Pettyjohn looks low, but can't take the lead from Byler. Nick Dixon in the white 17 won this event last year after an early spin forced him to pass 24 cars on his way to victory. Starting ninth, he would once again make his way to the front of the pack. Another car that looked strong early on was the 21 of Matt Lux. Here he battles Hollenbeck for fourth place and closes on Jim Yoder. However, Hollenbeck would battle back to his outside through three and four. Lux powers off of the turn to move past Yoder and into third. Meanwhile, up front, Petty John has tracked down Byler. They would race side by side for a couple of laps just like this. Finally, off of turn four, Petty John is able to clear the five machine of Byler and move into sole possession of first. Another driver on the move was the 1M of Jeremy Miller, a former winner at Heston. Here he takes a spot from the three of Tim Wilson. The leaders began to encounter some traffic. By then, Petty John had built up a lead of over half of a straightaway. Lux found the going tough as he tries to move past the lap car of Tom Decker Jr. A little contact sends him into the tractor tires and foils his charge to the front. Wilson and Jason Covert would come to a stop shortly after the lap 15 restart. So we try again. Petty John chooses the outer lane. He quickly clears Byler at the drop of the green. Off of turn two, Dixon makes it three wide for third as he moves under Hollenbeck with Jim Yoder on the outside. The trio is right on the heels of Byler going into turn three. Dixon powers off of the bottom and sets his sights on the runner-up spot. Through one and two, he hugs the bottom. Exiting the turn, he pulls even with Byler and races him going into turn three. Dixon makes it stick through the turns and shoots past Byler and into second place. The 12 of Devin Free started 13th. Here he squeezes to the inside of Hollenbeck to take away the fourth position. Keith Barber would slow on the backstretch to bring out the yellow on lap 24. Petty John would pull away from the field on the restart. One lap later, Jim Yoder gets into the back of the black 27 of Trevor Feathers, which brings the action to a stop once more. Now with 25 laps completed, we have another restart. Freeze and Petty John touch as they get back up to speed. But going through the turns, we have more problems as Byler and Dixon make contact, sending Dixon heading in the wrong direction. We now have a single foul restart. Everyone gets away cleanly. Byler rides high in the turn while Freeze hugs the bottom, and Petty John pulls away. Jeremy Miller, who started 16th, continued to pick off cars, eventually making it up to third. Yet neither he nor Devin Freeze could catch Mark Petty John, who goes on to collect the victory. Mark, congratulations on the win. Early in the race, you and Byler had quite a battle there side by side. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, just got to thank him for racing me clean. I, I don't really know him, but that was the first time tonight that I've, I can recall ever racing with him, and it was a good, clean race, a lot of fun. That's what it's all about. Yeah, but then it seemed after that, once you got up there in the lead, you pretty much held your own. Yeah, um, you know, it was, I wasn't sure what we were going to get, you know, because we had a bad pill draw, started dead last in the heat. But we came up to third, so the car wasn't bad. But then in the feature, luck of the draw, we got the pole. And uh, you know, I just once I got clear of Byler, I just kind of tried to ride my line. I had problems getting through three and four, so I had to change my line up to get through there. Uh, but one, two, I was good. Three, four, I just had to adjust my line and and just kind of nurse it through there. And I, I thought as long as I held my line, we'd be okay. Well, I guess unfortunately, Mark, you can't run this car in the second race, uh, something happened to your engine. Uh, yeah, when we were coming off the track from getting our photo taken, as soon as I pulled in the pit, the engine shut off, and uh, apparently we broke a timing chain. So 
Looks like we're out for the rest of the night with this car. We're going to have to work on changing the engine to get it ready for Bedford tomorrow. But um, Wayne Johnson, number 17, he was an alternate. He's going to let me drive his car in the race just to get the points and stuff. So I'd like to thank him for that. Um, hopefully we make out okay. You know, I don't, I don't just want to get in there and start and do the best I can do. Now your third three-stage flyers win of the year, that certainly helps you in the points. Yeah, it really does. Um, we didn't really intend on racing for points, and I've never been much of a points racer, but the first race we won of the year was a three-state flyer race, and they're going to be at most of the tracks we're going to run anyway, and we're good, you know, since we're good in the standings, we're going to stick with it for a little while as long as we're in contention. Now, I understand you've never raced there before, so being a racer and being resourceful, you found maybe a TV show that you watched some video of? Yes, I did. Uh, that would be your show, and I found it on Facebook. And I watched the Steel Block Bandit highlights from two weeks ago, and uh, really helped out a lot, give me an idea what the track was like. Mark Pettyjohn takes the checkers in the first 38-lap super late model race. He was followed across the line by Devin Fries, Jeremy Miller, Jim Yoder, and Dylan Yoder. There you have it, the first of the twin 38-lap features. Coming up next, we go back to Heston for round two of the UFO and three state flyer super late models. Keep it here. It's known as the Tricky Triangle, a track whose sum total equals a challenge like nowhere else. Smoke is boiling for three months, and Johnson. It is Pocono Raceway, where the first race was won by a king. Every race is full throttle to the photo finish. Virtual dead heat. And Rex are not the end, but the start of a comeback. This is Okano Raceway, where history is measured in right angles. <laughs> 